you welcome as we come together to explore a different topic today, one that in essence does not even exist, yet we will find a way to delve into it just the same. Our topic for today is that of travel time, time travel. In fact, time does not exist, at least not by itself. Time must be constructed. It must be built. It is an architecture. It must be attached to something. It must be attached to a foundation, whether it is a firm foundation, a physical one, or a foundation associated with a belief, the architecture of belief, if you like. Again, time itself does not exist, cannot exist. In fact, it is a rather far-fetched thought, yet I will tell you that if time did, in fact, exist by itself, you could not, would not exist. In fact, you exist because time does not. This allows you to be eternal, infinite, and to arrange yourself in many different ways in as many different ways and circumstances and worlds and planets and universes as you might. If time did, in fact, exist all by itself as a measure, well, infinite time would not allow you to be infinite on your own. So you would be attached to some thing, which you are not. That being said, Humanity in its present form, in its present species, organization, body, time, scape, time, stream form, prefers that time express itself as a product or alongside thought. Thought expresses itself with light and with sound. So by association, time has become a part of that factor as well. Time, then, is an expression of experience. Experience is a placement of an idea. Experience is where you place your attention, your awareness. Experience is a thinly veiled, thinly disguised, aspect of you, of what you are. In fact, when you slow down what you are, when you decelerate what you are enough, when you stretch that out enough, eventually you have something that becomes more dense and in fact forms a body. Your body then in some ways is formed by the slowing down of time and other processes so that experience is born. Your purpose, when it is placed within experience, when it is a factor of time, that allows you to see yourself reflected in time or alongside time. So what you are, then, is a beingness that can accelerate or decelerate. And when this is most active, and consciousness, by the by, is what makes it most active, most alive, most engaging, then time becomes a product of that, or an aspect of that theory, by example. So, the more that you accelerate your beingness, the more time accelerates with you. The more that time accelerates with you, the more opportunities you have, chances, if you like, to have many different experiences. The more that you accelerate your beingness by consciousness, the more light that surrounds you. The more the light that surrounds you, your thoughts, 
the more experiences also accelerate choice, accelerates and chance also accelerates, giving you more chances, more opportunities to describe or define yourselves in many different ways. Time, then, is not a constant because light is not a constant. It can be said that time is constantly expressing itself or is a constant of the expression of light and then light becomes an expression of experience. Experience becomes an expression of time and light an acute awareness or consciousness. By the by, you will say it is almost which came first then, time or light or sound or experience or consciousness. To this answer is consciousness, but barely. Because if you will note, in your life, consciousness is something that you aspire to, something that you would wish to accumulate more of. It is not something that many are automatically born with. In fact, it is something that you discover and choose to seek in some way. To bring it back is more like it. To recover it is more like it. For in fact, consciousness is something that you lose and find and lose and find and lose again only to find it again. How do you lose it? Where do you lose it? Well, in essence, you lose it in the seas, in the oceans of time. It is a little bit like having the keys to the kingdom and then deciding that you don't need them after all and throwing them, tossing them into the sea knowing that someone else will find them because you no longer need them, and then disappearing into all of the avenues, expressions of timelessness, jumping into the ocean, if you like, only to discover that now you do desire the keys to the kingdom again, so you go in search of them again, but now they are lost to time and space and experience. So you recreate another body, another life, another purpose, another goal, and go in search of the keys to the kingdom or consciousness. Well, now how do you go in search of them again? Now you must find them in time or through time, with time as your companion. When you come close to finding that consciousness or that awareness, that is when you begin to dress yourself again in the time of that time period, if you like. When you begin to approximate that consciousness, that is when your beingness begins to create, dress you in a purpose, dress you in a goal. And then that becomes dense, it becomes slow. You slow down time to the speed of where you believe you have tossed the keys. You begin to adjust yourself to that time, to that time period, to that purpose. And that becomes very interesting to the soul. It begins to tell almost a story, the story of you, or your new identity, or the new tale that you will tell yourself. And then because life, in fact, is a cosmic adventure, you dress yourself in the density of light and you enter time through a certain door that leads to the particular form of consciousness that you are in search of or that you wish to accumulate. Perhaps this seems all rather strange to you, as you would see yourself in a natural linear progression of time by which in each moment or in each lifetime you accumulate more consciousness where goals are met. And as you accumulate this knowingness and you build upon building your truths, eventually you reach a pinnacle. Well, in ordinary time you could do this. And there are, in fact, many lifetimes that you have lived in succession of one another where you have made it appear just so. But again, I tell you that time does not exist. 
so if time does not exist how could you in fact have arranged all of this one in succession after another first one then the other only by arranging it only by using it as a certain material as a certain fabric by placing one in front or behind the other so it is you with consciousness that addresses time or makes time or causes it to exist or causes it to exist in a certain order so that it serves you so that it suits you so this experience that you have now in third dimensional earth time experience it has been constructed this world based upon an artificial timescape has been constructed to serve you and other versions of you or others like you it has been constructed to serve the laws of nature so the laws now of this third dimensional version of earth serve nature and nature serves the laws of nature time then becomes one of those laws in this density in this time period based upon this arrangement the light of the sun conspires in this or agrees to it if you like and even the very spin the very rotation of the earth the very revolution of the earth round the sun all cause time to evolve or to portray itself in the certain characteristics that it offers to you so that time and light seem to progress day by day so that a 24 hour time period seems to go by appropriately so that a lifetime seems to be led one year after another after another until a complete lifetime can be seen where you can see into the future where you can look back into the past and where you might imagine yourself as part of all of this progression yet again in careful reflection as we explore this topic i tell you that time does not exist and that it only exists because it tells the story of your life or the story that you have agreed to in this time period in this dimension as it has been created you have constructed time to serve you and in fact it does it serves you by dividing itself into certain quadrants throughout the day into hemispheres for the earth into expressions of time and year and calendar and in fact it serves you as well by expressing itself as dimensions so that the third dimensional time is one experience and as you move through the fourth dimension which is known as time or where time is constructed better put that is when you are then able to access or to begin to work with time or to accelerate time so that you will have other experiences if you wish then to work with time to manipulate or experience or advance time you must do so through certain doorways and these doorways are dimensions the closest doorway dimension to humanity now to most upon the earth is the fourth dimensional doorway many it is that perceive the fourth dimension as time better put it is the fourth dimension that is the threshold of time and in fact where time is created where it advances where it is used where the fabric of time is made to perform in one way or another or when time can be made to act upon something time can be made to act upon light and light likewise can act upon time to accelerate it or to slow it as well and the dimensions then are the proving ground of this 
when one moves through a dimensional landscape, there is a warp of sorts. Imagine, in some ways, that you are to move from light to dark, except that there is not a movement from light to dark. There is only light dark. This is a little bit jarring for the human system. And in fact, there are many, many who, once they find themselves in human bodies, they cannot, in fact, move through time any longer because the density is too much for them. A little bit like you might imagine yourself encumbered underneath the water with the breathing apparatus and much more surrounding your body in order to go deeper and deeper into the water than your body would normally allow. Well, in that same way, many, in fact, most bodies do not normally allow one to move from light, dark, dark, light, or to move through time, no time, or through certain circumstances of time. There are many bodies that simply do not tolerate it, and would not, and in fact the very bodies would cease to exist. The souls, of course, know this, for their bodies are arranged in many different ways, and once this science were to be understood, it could be seen which bodies could be accelerated and to which degree, and what bodies are simply not suited for such acceleration. As you might imagine, there are some bodies that are well suited for great heights, but not depths, or vice versa. There are certain bodies that are better served to have certain genders again and again, and not others. So you see, the human body, then, is a vehicle, and many of these are very adaptable, but not all are, or adaptable within certain circumstances, but not others. Now, the beingness that you are, that is pure. That is pure consciousness, and that is pure awareness. But human consciousness and human awareness, meaning that you have now dressed it in the density of the body, now there are other laws, other rules to contend with. And that is why we say here that not all are adaptable in this way. So here is not necessarily what is being given as a preference. You see, it is not to say this one is smarter than that one, or this one is more capable and the others are not. Here we are simply saying that an eagle may fly at great heights or altitudes, but a sparrow may not. So it has to do with the very arrangement of the physicality, the space between the molecules, how dense the atoms are arranged or not. And so each beingness has chosen its human vehicle accordingly, and some are highly adaptable, therefore adaptable to other dimensions and experience and travel, and others are not. In this case, then, as we continue, assuming that a dimension will allow you its transit, for one must, in fact, transit through dimensions, there is only the illusion of time during these as well. You have the illusion of time now, the illusion that, for instance, one hour lasts 60 minutes, that one minute lasts 60 minutes, and the illusion of days that go by. Again, this is artificially constructed to serve the third dimension and to serve the earth as it is currently arranged in this third dimension for human experience for many seasons for the body to serve. When light, as light, expands and contracts, even as the breath does, bodies do the same. So the same or similar body could, in fact, serve you for many more years than it does now. What you would term one human lifetime, as you know, this measure has changed very much over the expressions of humanity, its consciousness, its beliefs about itself, its beliefs about its purpose upon the earth, who or what it serves, 
how free and creative it is or is not, all of this has contributed to humanity's conscious awareness of itself, what it believes it is capable of, and therefore where it believes it has come from or is able to go to. If you knew, for instance, your true history, humanity's true history, where it has come from in its lineage, that would tell you more about your own longevity. That would allow you to think further back than you do now. That would allow you, in many ways, to have a greater experience of your future because your experience of your past would be more far-reaching as well. However, this present world was not created to allow you a full perspective of that. Not yet. You have arranged it so that that is something that you wish to stumble upon or create or decode. And of course, that is being honored. You will notice that almost all of the teachers that you draw to yourself give to you small bite-sized pieces of this so that you will find out for yourself some of these mysteries. It is not omitted to your nature because you are incapable of reasoning this so much as this is how it has been invited for you by your own expression. As you transit then from one dimension to another, you will have the opportunity to look both forwards and back. In some ways, you will do this at light speed, or at the speed of light as it is presented to you, and that is when you will see equally, both forward and backward, and there you will be able to see how you have arranged yourself in time or through time. Continuing again with the reminder that time does not exist, not by itself. There is nowhere to go through time. You cannot enter time in this way. You cannot exit time in this way, for to do so would cause your body to cease to exist. Your body exists in time and through time, and you and your body are currently merged into one unit of experience by your choice. You can, however, experience time by accelerating it or decelerating it, by accelerating your awareness, by deepening that awareness, and by temporarily entering other dimensions of experience, with the arrangements being similar yet distinct from yours, which will allow you to see through time or through different eyes and have different experiences of time itself. Since time does not exist, you cannot go to time through time or through time to somewhere else. You do not necessarily go to the future. If you wish to have another experience of time and you said to yourself and to your mind, I wish to move into the future, to see the future, that is not exactly what you would do. It is not time that would advance in that way. You would simply have now future, or now past, or now time, yet time would be different. It would confuse you or confound you. You see, there is no going from here to there. There is only here, there. Here, there is there, here. If you were here and are now there, then there would be here, and here would be there. You are simply exchanging then, not moving from here to there, here, there, there, here. You are exchanging one experience for another by accelerating awareness or consciousness. The point being then, that you would not have the experience of moving through time or being able to remember or recollect, I was there, now I am here, 
Therefore, I must have moved through time because it is the through part that does not exist. This is difficult for those that are not certain whether or not they believe in accelerating future or future time. It is difficult to rearrange the mind and the way that the mind associates consciousness with this topic. And that is why many who could have a very successful movement into other dimensions or other experiences or the illusion of what you might call time travel do not have this or do not think they have the ability or the ability to experience it because of how they seek to measure it. In other words, to have a pure experience of time travel, you would need to surrender your mind's idea of this moment or your mind's idea of the past or of the future in order to fully grasp the next place or the next moment. And there are few who in truth are willing to do this. In other words, if I said to you, you can have a full experience of another time, of another place, of the future, of the past, and all you need to do is to completely surrender this identity, this story of who and what you are, this experience that you have led, the history that you have accumulated in this life so far, anything that you know about yourself or your family, if you would surrender that, then you could have a full experience of time elsewhere. And again, there are few that would say, oh yes, I would jump at that chance. Even if there are those that would, then there is the arrangement of consciousness, how it must be rearranged, and so an identity rearranged as well. Now, once humanity is more able to express itself dimensionally, in other words, to remove some, at least, of the limitations associated with itself and how it is constructed, what it thinks about itself and its life, then there will be many more opportunities to travel with time or with the acceleration of time, then who and what you are would have a little bit less identity, but it would have a strategy associated with that identity that would allow itself to make and to remake itself with light and sound and time and consciousness to accelerate itself. This is not entirely possible now, therefore time travel is not entirely possible. I will tell you that your great and secret sciences have been experimenting with time travel, well, for a very long time now, for several decades, as a matter of fact, in this particular era, and they have not managed to have a true success because they have not managed to have the memory associated with the success. I will tell you that they have, in fact, successfully sent candidates into future, into past, but they have not been truly successful in recovering these from the past or the future intact. They have recovered the individuals. They have recovered much information that they have gone in search of. And yet success has eluded them because they were not able to piece together the mind successfully. For the mind had been divided or sectored then dimensionally into many different identities through every corridor of time. Another identity another illusion gained, another illusion lost. Imagine that you were able to make yourself and unmake yourself, make yourself and unmake yourself with every breath. You can imagine that when you finally slowed the process down, as was the case here, the individual was not the same individual as began the journey. 
Therefore science in some ways was able to have an experiment. It was able to retrieve or to see beyond this current moment. But it cannot stabilize that, not yet. It does not yet understand how to accelerate or decelerate every aspect of the body, including molecules and cells, because these in fact were created and necessary in this particular dimension and very much identify with the identity of the particular being of which they are a part. So here we have added then that dimensions are the key. The more that one understands dimensions, the more that you will understand how to decode time. Light, then, is a product of that or associated with that. Light is not a constant, but can accelerate or decelerate alongside consciousness, aiding everything, including time. With just the right amount of acceleration of light speed or light year understanding, then you would understand the future itself and how to move into and through that. Based upon all of this understanding, then, can it be said that humanity can time travel? Well, yes as long as you understand that it does not exist. You can travel time, not to time, not to the future. You can travel with time. You can accelerate time by accelerating yourself. You can accelerate the movements and such by becoming one with them. So time or time travel is not exactly a science, but it is a discipline of sorts. And in order to understand this discipline, you must make yourself more fluid and less dense. So the more mass that you have as an individual, the less easy it is to become fluid with time. The more mass that you have, the more you are associated with the third dimension and its gravitational pull along the lines of that mass. However, the more that you rearrange yourself into a fluidity where light becomes fluid and fluid becomes light, imagine your entire body appearing more as a fluidity of fluorescent light, liquid fluorescent light. This would give you an approximation of what fluidity looks like. It flows gently, and at the same time it is not attached to your identity. It would exist as form, but without the need to be form. If you like, another way to imagine this is to draw an arc around you. Not exactly a circle, but an arc, a little bit like a rainbow, with bands and color waves of energies that can either accelerate or decelerate the light around you. Imagine a nexus, then, in which you are at its cross point, both accelerating and decelerating as fluidity, so that only when there is a point at the nexus do you recognize any form of an identity and the rest of the time you are simply flowing through the bands of energy in that nexus pouring from one energetic moment to the next. You will notice in this experience or in this exercise that there are no straight lines that there are curves and motions, that all things are in movement and motion, in the great currents, and that is how time travels. So time does not travel here, there, or in a straight line, as you might imagine. Time curves, it bends, and so does light, and so does experience. That is why it is best not to have a hard, fast belief because it will not bend as well. It is best to bend as the willow, as they say. 
all of these are but examples for you but purposefully because there is a science in fact that where there is an arc or where there is a flow where there is a curve or where there is a bend that there are natural accelerators there that in fact light bends and travels in great bands and great waves of energy and that this in fact is a more direct point from A to B than you can imagine otherwise. Time does not travel then in a straight line, it arcs, and in fact it seems to arc counterclockwise, bending against time or against current, so that in order to move forward it would almost seem that you need to bend backward. So here you have some anomalies of time and light as timescapes and landscapes present themselves to you. Here I cannot exactly give to you an exercise for how to accelerate the motion about you. Because in fact you cannot cheat time, you see? You cannot cheat time. And at the same time you can call to the cells and molecules of the body that record every breath. And though you cannot cheat time, you can in fact sync time. You can in fact have synchronous time. So that the dimensions then bend in your favor, tip in your favor. The slight difference or the nuance to this would allow you to perceive that doors are open for you rather than you struggling, or as you present yourself near enough to the bend or the knock of the door, already it opens, it leans in your favor, it leans into you. In essence, synchronous time, then, can most easily be described as a more natural state in which time can exist. Linear time, then, is artificial, synchronous, or time which arcs or bends in order to match consciousness, is a more natural state. So the more that you arc or bend time in your favor, well, it could be said that it would retrieve for you longer life, longevity that you would bend as the willow in terms of mind and body and awareness and experience, it will slow the effects of time while accelerating the current of time. This will return you more to the natural flow or the synchronous time and allow you to experience much more of life at a slower pace. This is something that you can do now. It is a form of time travel, and after all, time being the illusion that it is, why not take advantage of it, in fact? Make yourself, then, of a finer substance. You do this with your awareness. You do this by imagining more space, more current between the molecules of the body, more space between them. Imagine that you are set in a room to do exercises along with others and that you space apart a little bit from others to give yourself more room, more movement, more arc. It is the same imagination that you use in this condition then to make more space for the molecules, the atoms around you and in between you. This will place you a little bit more in synchronous time. It has the effect of removing a bit of density and allowing a little bit more consciousness, room to grow as it would be. And then you begin to find this arc, this nexus, the bands of light, each one with a certain meaning or experience for you each one with a certain message, though if you pay attention to the message in this case, you will be lost to time and the experience, at least as far as time travel, will be of no use to you. Therefore, this exercise is not about the message that time or the currents of time have for you, but about time itself. 
in essence you are inserting your awareness into the great synchronous nexus of all things you are joining the river of life you are moving from here there there here by moving your awareness into one that is non-physical or practically speaking non-physical in this way then you enter time as a time scape it is a little bit like becoming the rainbow itself rather than the opportunity to see the rainbow and there will be a momentary or a temporary loss of experience a loss of identity if you like as you join the great river of time less of an identity less of a personality less of a here there today and tomorrow less purpose for at least some of this will be dissolved in the experience but perhaps the experience of traveling quickly of accelerating of moving through the perception of dimensions and doorways will be a way to know to have to be and to experience so here is a small exercise then for you to perceive and for you to use for your own I offer it then to you as a simple token for it is difficult to bring to you a subject of something that does not exist and at the same time knowing that it is of a great curiosity to you and how could you not wish to see yourself experienced with the backdrop of the future before you or to truly see the past from a more objective or personal place so the opportunity to travel time is real as long as you understand that time itself does not cannot exist by itself you cannot simply enter time and say I will go here go there go visit this go visit there and that is one of the main reasons why other beloveds to you those who have crossed over and have promised oh I give to you my word just as soon as I see what is on the other side of that river as soon as I see what is on the other side of time and the veils of time I will come to you I will report to you and you will know that it is real too and then why did they not return with an accurate report why would a beloved leave you hanging in such a way and at the same time how is it that others do in fact carry messages across these rivers it is because those that understand the time no time see that there are ways to insert something into and through without the need to come back to come here to go there without retracing their steps and again as with other things there are those that are very adept at this and others that are not so here we have another topic then for you to consider consider time in fact you consider it every day you consider it upon waking and you consider it upon sleeping now I simply suggest that you consider it from a different perspective altogether consider what it is that it is another tool for your use that you can construct it or deconstruct it based upon the architecture the scaffolding that you dress around it and that you can do the same with yourself with your thoughts and your bodies you can accelerate them or decelerate them using time as a codex as an access point as a nexus here you have a body of science as I have presented it to you and all you need do is not use your preconceived ideas of what has been yet given to you based upon time or time travel and here begin to use it by a different perspective you will see that this topic will come into use for you into play for you in other discussions that we will have and in future moments that are nearer to you than you imagine begin now to play with time to arrange it and rearrange it imagine that you have a clock if you like with many different fittings and needles for hours and that you can rearrange the hours in the day and still call them a progression but not a lineage begin to see how time is arranged and that in fact it can be rearranged and the same is true of calendars of course and the same is true of your mind and of consciousness begin to see all of these not as playthings but as ideas as tools 
where consciousness can become what you wish it to be so that you do not find yourself instead hoping for a little bit more thought, for a little bit more creativity, a little bit more this. You are not beggars holding out your hands or your minds in hopes of a little bit more, but great and powerful beings existing beyond this moment, tracing and retracing thoughts and ideas in order to explore them and discover them by other means. So be it, sweet ones, I present a topic to you, one that in fact did not exist, as in fact the time that we have now spent together also did not. Until the next moment, I bid you good day.